I love the people here. Uh, the schools are awesome. Uh, we're in between Columbus and Atlanta, Noonan, so we're right in the middle of everything that possibly is. We would ride through LaGrange and I would say, oh, I'd, I think I'd love to live in that town someday. And here I am. But there are some characters here <laughs> that help make this place a little more lively, I think. And I would think most small towns this size have probably a lot of uh, unique sort of people. LaGrange seems to have a plentiful supply of uh, uniqueness. Uh, we opened in 1920. My great-grandfather opened on Main Street. Uh, we moved in this location in 1946. We've been here ever since. Hot dogs, hamburgers, grilled chicken, chicken salad, Brunswick stew, peanut butter and jelly, grilled cheese, you name it. Chips, drinks, lemon sours. Oh yeah, we have families that come in that have been coming in their, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, they bring their kids in, their kids bring their kids in. People from school come back, people come to town to visit their family. They will usually come here before they ever even get home. If we don't know them by name, we know them by order. And if we don't know them by name or order, we know they've never been here. And that's pretty neat, too. I started working here when I was 12. So I've been here 32 years. So I just told my age. <laughs> It gets chaotic. It gets elbow to elbow, uh, which is awesome. Uh, most people cram in, and the ones that can't, they order in the window, uh, or they'll call in their orders. We'll have it ready when they get here. Uh, most people like to come in, sit at the bar. There'll be people here talking to other people on the other side. It, it's pretty neat. It's sort of like a dance. You got to know what you're doing. You got to know who's in front of you. You got to know what's going on. It's not a whole lot of time to be figuring out you know, where to go, what to do. You keep your eyes open, you keep moving, you keep smiling, you keep talking, and it just becomes a chaotic dance that makes sense at the end of the day. This one with the pickle on top, is it to go to? You come get me, JJ? It's individualized, you know what I mean? And that's what we do, that's what we thrive on. It's not just making money. It's about what has happened on the inside, and, and that's what people remember. You know, it, it, hot dogs and hamburgers, and I love Charlie Joseph's. Uh, and, and I don't know what we have done for the people that come here, but I know, what, I know what has happened inside of me as a result of the people that come in here. So, I'm humbled. I'm honored. I grew up in here. Um, I mean, I was here as a child. I, It means a lot to me. Um, this is my home, and it always will be. I don't think too many people knew about gluing the yarn on to create two-dimensional works of art, but I think most people now know about yarn art. Yes, especially in Georgia. A lot of art teachers have picked this up as an activity. 
It's a fun activity, and it's one that uh, I introduced to my students back in the early 70s when I was teaching junior high school students. I saw where you could glue yarn to watercolor paper with Elmer's glue. Okay, that's my husband's church, and I think I've done about three pictures, maybe more, using his church, and I used to use mine. I have done several from mine, but anyway, um, the pianist, I just decided I would let her have a shoe off to, to add a little humor to the picture. Yes, but each one of the churches, I changed them up a little bit. Yes. You just draw your design, and after you get it drawn, I use the macrame thread and put on, glue onto the lines that I've drawn, and this is a one in the rough. And it's an easy, simple activity but I don't use anything but my scissors and my fingers. And I push them in close sometimes with the scissors, similar to this. Okay, I put little dots of glue. And you glue little dots of glue, 10 or 15. You don't want too many, they'll dry on you. And so, okay, and then I take the end. Some people think I might cut it, but no, I will lose that. I take the end and clip as close as I can. But anyway, when I get through with this, I would have all of this area covered. And I've done a lot of cotton fields, and this happens to be one in this series that I did. And people, when I was a child coming along, they would wash clothes in the tin tub outside, had a wash pot to boil the clothes in. They used bluing and homemade soap and uh, Usually there would be more than one person and some would be hanging up the clothes as they wash them. I taught art all of my teaching career. I taught art for, in Thomasville for one year and in Troop County 34 years, but I've taught on all levels. When I look back, I think God meant for me to be in LaGrange and uh, it has been a lot of encouragement to my family. Are you ready? Attention, please. Four, two, three, four, five. Live a month. Let me eat it. You want to line them up? It is a very rigorous sport, and we are going to wear your butt out today. Okay, so. Be ready for a workout. Four, five, six, seven. So your legs, eight. your body, you're using all of it. You're not just using your arm, okay, to paddle in a dragon boat, and your coach will teach you more about that. So again, we'll say paddles up when we want you to start paddling. Power! Now! Pull! 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 That's gonna be like your practice drum today. Okay. On race day, you'll have a real drum. But you follow them, okay? They don't follow you necessarily. So when their paddle's hitting the water, you hit the drum. All right, I gotta get going, actually. Give me five easy strokes. Paddles up, nice and easy. Go, one, two, three, four. Dragon Boat Racing inherently involves a team of people who have to work together on the water to make the boat move and to win the race. And nonprofit, Fundraising is kind of the same thing. We all have to come together as a community to work together to fight whatever the cause is, whatever the need is, and that's what they do with this sport. They do it both on the water and off the water by raising money for the charity. Let's say this is the front of the boat. This is the front of the boat. Let me get you to come up to where this guy is. Let me just get back one. Last year, what I noticed was, frankly, I'm a woman and I'm, you know, doing a job that probably most men would do, hauling boats, I can drive the lift, that kind of thing. Nobody blinked an eye last year that I could do that. Nobody sort of, you know, treated me like I was this little girl who didn't know what I was doing. It was immediate respect, and I don't see that a lot. And I travel around the country all the time, and I don't see that a lot in any community. So this is a great place. 
This is the second year for the event. Last year we had the first year event. This is a great community. I absolutely fell in love with the place when I came here last year, actually. Uh, I, told every, I told a lot of people, this is such a great community and people here are so nice. Uh, and it just, it's so beautiful here as well. So just love it here. I mean, as soon as we pulled up, people are started talking to us. And, and it's just one of those communities where people embrace you. And we're always double booked on this weekend. We have a, we have a race in another city right now. And I wanna be here. I wanna be in LaGrange, Georgia. And certainly if you look out on this crowd, it is a wonderful day. It's a huge crowd, a great turnout. I think 2018. This is one of those things that LaGrange and Troop County does really, really well. We support our local institutions. Are you ready? I can decree. Southern through and through, hospitality, welcoming. Um, I think that most of the citizens of the of the area would be very happy to to welcome you in and offer you a, cup, uh, a glass of tea. Sweet tea. Sweet, of course. <laughs> Lagrange was established in 1826 off of a land grant um, made and uh, negotiated with the Creek Indians to purchase the land that would become West Georgia. Um, by 1828, there is a land lottery, and white settlers were moving in at that point. Marquis de Lafayette, a Revolutionary War hero from France, was coming back through the United States to tour all 24 states at that time um, to see the great nation that had become after the Revolution. And it's said that during his grand tour, as they called it, um, he passed across the Chattahoochee River not far south from here that he commented on what a lovely piece of land it was and how much it reminded him of his home, LaGrange de Blaineau and that is where LaGrange, the city's name, has come from. I hope to see it grow while remembering its past. It has a phenomenal past, and because of so much involvement from the community to maintain that historical heritage, you, for example, you walk down the square, you can see the 1870s buildings that still exist. It's a big city feel, but with the values and the, the hospitality of a small southern town. It was a home, it was a private home. Fuller E. Calloway was a textile magnet. Um, he had worked very hard all of his life and decided that he was going to build a beautiful home. And this is the home, an Italian villa home in 1916. Welcome to Hills and Dales. And we'll come into the library is a very traditional style room. It has beautiful woodwork, the crown molding, the surround around the bookcases and the fireplace and the pediment over the door. So we'll come into the dining room next. And as you come into the dining room, you look up and you see a beautiful ceiling. That ceiling is really the main feature of the dining room. Um, it's all plaster. You look up and you think it's beautiful woodwork, but everything you see is plaster. And looking at that ceiling, you have to remind yourself that the house was completed in only 15 months.
Yeah, so if you would have told me 10 years as an LA guy that not only would I be living in LaGrange, but actually really excited about it, I would have definitely thought you, uh, you were lying to me. But um, you know, LaGrange, we talk to a lot of people around here and, and um, the, the, this one theme keeps coming up and that's quality of life. And you have people that are, um, you know, that, that travel for work all over the country and all over the world, but they come back to LaGrange. And, and that's really what struck us is that it's a really great community to raise a family. Um, and, and we hope on, on, on the same token that we can bring some additional entertainment aspects uh, to people that, that will help enrich their lives and, and keep them you know, excited and, and going places and doing things as well. We had found out from them that they were looking to produce uh, a craft beer festival but didn't exactly know how uh, and they wanted to use this in hopes of convincing an existing brewery to uh, move their operations to the Grange. So we took a wild leap as we say and spent $60,000 of our own money to produce the first LaGrange Craft Beer Festival in October uh, 2015. You know, at some point we looked at each other and we, we thought, you know, we should be the guys to, to start a craft brewery in LaGrange. And, and really from the moment that festival finished, um, we began kind of taking steps to, to make that a reality. We're very fortunate in that the city uh, used the brewery as, as kind of the catalyst for a lot of change in this area of downtown. So while yes, there is a brewery right here, there's so much more that, that you know, we're so thankful to be kind of the centerpiece of. So, for example, right in front of the brewery, uh, there's a plaza, it's a, a brick top plaza that, that's being finished right now that um, has an outdoor covered stage and a capacity of over 1,600 people. Behind the brewery uh, is a large green space that will be finished in a matter of months that will include a dog park, a skate park, a children's playground, and a green space. So, you know, we're just thrilled with, with the development here and, and, and you know, with the, the, the city of LaGrange in general, you know, last year, uh, Sweetland Amphitheater opening up down the street, and this year, the brewery opening, and then next year, of course, you have Great Wolf Lodge, which is just a couple miles down the road, uh, opening up, and that's gonna be a 450-plus room uh, hotel slash indoor water park that's projected to bring a half million visitors a year. You know, we're really excited about the growth of LaGrange, and, and we think that there are many big things ahead. Excuse the mess. Come on in. <laughs> so, uh, so again, this is this is the tap room. Um, in this room, we're going to have televisions, a projector screen, um, furniture everywhere. Something that one of the things we're most excited about. Uh, this is a public plaza where we're going to be able to put on large-scale events. We love you all. Thank you. Thank you. You're at the Sweetland Amphitheater in LaGrange, Georgia, and we are uh, four blocks just uh, north of downtown, our downtown corridor, and um, yeah, this is an 11-acre, $8 million outdoor amphitheater. If you've lived in larger cities, which is what I lived in, um, you definitely consider this a small town. So it's it's great. It's you know it's a, we're at a juncture in our life. We have small children. Um, I mean it, it's it, it's what you would think it is in terms of the school bus picks them up at the end of the driveway. Um, it's kind of a running joke around here that it only takes five minutes to get anywhere, um, and that's true as well. Um, people ask me, are there is there is there traffic jams? Is it does, do they do they have rush hour? Um, and if it is, it means that you've had to sit through a light uh, for more than four minutes and that's about it. Uh, tonight we're featuring a community orchestra that gets together annually just for this event um, comprised of 45 different uh, musicians in the area so they'll play a number of patriotic themes throughout the evening. Well, 
like Miss E and I don't exactly fit the profile of an art collector. I was a stonemason uh, for most of my career and Missy is a retired high school math teacher. So um, I was very fortunate to have an in-family art advisor, my uncle William L. May. He uh, got to me right out of college. I got out of college in 74 and so he infected me with this disease of collecting. At one time in our prime, we were buying a, an original piece of art once every three weeks for about 25 years. We were really going at it uh, pretty strong. We probably have 400 pieces of African American art. This is just what we've gone in to curate uh, this show of trying to showcase African American women doing abstraction. Let's see, this is uh, Mina Robinson. Uh, she's from Columbus, Ohio. It's called Chicken Foot Woman. And this lady uh, was awarded a MacArthur Lifetime Achievement Award several years ago. Uh, here's one small piece, a beautiful piece by Howard Dina Pindell again. We have several pieces of Howard Dina. These are all uh, punch outs from a hole puncher. There's thousands of them. She's very known for that. We didn't get to Andy Warhol until 1980. There are 10 images in the series. Um, this is one of the popular images. What's nice about this series is uh, nine of the 10 are sprinkled with industrial diamond dust. So in the right light, they have the perfect little sparkle that uh, is as enchanting as the mm -hmm. images are. Missy and I really enjoy sharing, uh, in living with the art and sharing what we have been able to accumulate. So since 1985, we have been <clears throat> touring the collections around to different museums around the country. We're, we're just fortunate to have had these and to be able to share them. to Pure Life. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Maggie McDonald. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing tonight. Um, so we're a Southern listening room. Uh, we support original music for locals and for artists from around the world. He has played with Randy Travis, Joey and Rory, John Barry. Pure Life Studios is proud to introduce you to Barry Waldrop and Friends. <laughs> was originally a holistic fitness and nutrition studio, so the stage was my little stage for teaching yoga. And we uh, eventually just got bigger and bigger, and Barry Waldrop that was here tonight, um, he came and looked at me and he's like, this is amazing. I can set you up with your first five artists if you want to do this. And I'm like, I'm scared because I don't know anything about running a, a music venue, and I said, um, okay, let's do it. And we did, and we've been doing it two and a half years. Well, it's warm and it's friendly, and you feel like you're in your living room, and that's kind of the whole point, because it is specifically a listening room. Um, it's not a bar. In fact, when I first opened, people would say, you need to let people talk. I'm like, no, I don't. Yeah, um, that's not the point behind it. There are a lot of characters in LaGrange, and I like that. I think it keeps it interesting. You know, I think that people get in that 
rigmarole of wanting to do well and be successful, we forget about the other things that happen that kind of make you smile. I'll tell you what's funny is when we first opened, one of the things I refused to do was ask people what they did because I just wanted them to play. I wanted our commonality to remain music. So when we came in here, this was a place for music. It didn't matter if you were a lawyer in town or you were, you know, work in sanitation. And I love that. I mean, finally, eventually you do talk about those things, but um, I made it a point not to ask what people did. It's more, what do you play? Um, have you ever thought about playing? If they don't play and you can tell they want to sing, coaxing them in, just come up and sing a song with us. So that was really important to me when when we started. LaGrange is awesome. You should come visit. But don't move here. <laughs> Just visit. Thank you.